guys, so I'm here today to do my TBR for the Newt's Readathon. So the Newt's Readathon is the follow-on from the Owl's Readathon, which took place in April, I believe, and is hosted by the Book Roast. So if you're not familiar with the uh, Harry Potter universe, then OWLs or Owls are your ordinary wizarding levels that you sit in your fifth year of Hogwarts. And then NEWTs or Newts are the step up from that, which you sit in your final year of Hogwarts. And the host of this readathon puts in such incredible effort to the prompts and the rules and the material surrounding this readathon. It's incredible. But to participate in the Newts readathon, which is running in August, you are supposed to have completed your OWLs already this year and I did participate in the OWLs back in April and got a few different qualifications in different subjects and based on the subjects that I got my OWLs in I had decided to carry a few of those forward into any WT level and I have picked those based on the wizarding career path I want to follow so if you've seen um, TBRs or videos about this readathon previously you'll know that the host created a whole booklet of uh, wizard and career paths you might want to follow and different qualifications you need for each career path. So I decided to go for one of two career paths based on what I got in my OWLs because I am of course restricted by having failed to get History of Magic which was actually the OWL that I needed to complete my original plan. But no matter, I've decided that now I'm either going to be a wand maker or a magizoologist. And I actually need very similar qualifications for either of these, just um, one main difference, which I think will just be determined by my reading during the month, and we will find out then what I'm going to become. But to become a wand maker, I need an O in Herbology, which is outstanding, an E in Care of Magical Creatures, which is exceeds expectations, and an A in Charms, which is acceptable. Or to be a Magizoologist, I need an O in Care of Magical Creatures, an E in Charms, and an E in Herbology. So to give myself the best chance, I figured out that I need to aim for an E in Charms and an O in both of the other subjects. So if I aim for all of those things, then hopefully I will get the choice of at least one of these career paths and potentially both. And that therefore has determined my TBR because for each subject and for each mark in each sub subject there is a different prompt and I have picked books to go with each prompt. So I'm going to run through them with you now and regardless of whether you're participating in the readathon or involved in the more complicated side of the equation then you might just be interested in what I plan on reading in August. So first up I'm going to start with the books I'm reading for Care of Magical Creatures. Now first up you have to read a book for the acceptable grade and then you can carry on with the challenges. You have to complete them in order. So to get an acceptable in this subject you have to read a book beginning with an A and for that I have A Corner, The Unicorn Girl by Anne McCaffrey and Margaret Ball and I also thought this was quite apt for the challenge because it is about a unicorn alien girl and unicorns are certainly a part of Care of Magical Creatures. Um, this is a science fiction book I recently picked up in a, in a charity shop and it sounds so intriguing, I'd never heard about it before. But it's basically about, like I mentioned, an alien unicorn girl who is um, abandoned by her parents in order to survive when she is a baby and is rescued by another alien race who then go on to raise her and it's about her adventures in outer space, about discovering herself, about being the odd one out. Uh, I'm really intrigued by this whole universe. For an E I'm supposed to read a book under 300 pages and for this I decided to go for one quite a bit under 300 pages. This is more around the 100 page mark and that is Let Me Tell You This by Nadine Aisha Jassat and this is a collection of poetry which was a gift to me from my friend Jen and I have been really excited to pick up since she um, sent it my way. It also has a stunning cover. But this has a recommendation from Jackie Kay on the front who's a poet I already enjoy and that makes me think I might like this as well. It explores racism, gender-based violence and the sustaining restoration bonds between women which is apparently told with searing precision and intelligent lyricism. Are you not sold? Because I am. And then to get to the outstanding grade in that subject I am to read a book with a bird on the cover and I wasn't sure I had one of these at first until I looked a little bit closer and realised that there is an owl on the front cover of this book. So behind the text and behind the gold foiling, this grey pattern here depicts an owl. See? Eyes, beak, feathers, etc. And I was like, yes, because I really want to read this book as well. And it is, of course, Other Words for Smoke by Sarah Maria Griffin. This is a mystery novel, which might have a paranormal twist or might not. I can't really tell from the back, 
but regardless it sounds super intriguing. It's about a strange mother and son who are seen as slight outcasts by their community but then they disappear. And the only people that seem to care are brother and sister May and Rossa who spent two strange summers with this family and now want to know what has happened to them. But if I can complete all of those challenges I will attain my outstanding grade in Care for Magical Creatures as I hoped. And then I'm planning to get an Exceeds Expectations in Charmed so for that I first need to read a book with a beautiful cover and I have chosen to go with Zami, a new spelling of my name, a mythobiography by Audrey Lord. Now I think a lot of the books on my shelves have beautiful covers but this one actually has a beautiful piece of art on the front. It's a Penguin Modern Classic and this piece of art is actually called Revolutionary Sister and it's by Dinga McCannon. Apparently it was created in 1971 using mixed media and constructed on wood and I think it's just absolutely stunning. I think it's a really beautiful choice for this book so I thought it fit it perfectly with this with this um, criteria and it is a non-fiction book all about the life of Audrey Lorde who was a um, lesbian activist feminist poet and I um, really have enjoyed her non-fiction and her poetry in the past so I thought I uh, so I've been meaning to read her autobiography and then Lauren and I decided to make this the read for the Feminist Orchestra Book Club um, over the next two months which makes it perfect time for me to pick up. And then I am supposed to read a graphic novel or a comic book. I'm not 100% certain what I will read for this challenge. I have a few things on my shelves that would fit into this criteria and a few more out of the library, although I do plan on reading some of these in July still. But I'm gonna quickly run through them so that you can tell me which one you think I should prioritize. I have the first volume of Orange, the manga series by Ichigo Takano. I have um, Baba Yaga's Assistant by Marika Makula and Emily Carroll. I have Goliath by Tom Gold, all out from the library. Then I do also have Red Rosa, a graphic biography of Rosa Luxemburg by Kate Evans which has been on my shelf for what feels like forever now and I keep meaning to read. So I think I'll probably pick from those but let me know what you think I should read. Which brings us on to Herbology and for the first grade in Herbology I need to either read a book with a green cover or listen to an audiobook and I love audiobooks so of course I want to listen to an audiobook for that challenge however I haven't picked which one that's going to be so again I would like your feedback. Bag. I'm going to tell you some of the audiobooks that are top of my TBR at the moment and I want to know what one you think I should read. There's Low Barn by Kerry Hudson which is a non-fiction book about growing up in poverty in Scotland. There's Natives Race and Class in the Ruins of Empire by Akala which again is all about racism in, in Britain and the legacy of um, British imperialism. And then some fiction options I have Seas of Crimson Silk by Emma Hamm which I don't know a lot about except that I love Emma Hamm's fantasy books so I'm sure I'm going to love this one. And then Heartless which is the fourth book in the Parasol Protectorate series by Gail Carragher and that is a um, kind of fantasy of manners mystery series with werewolves and vampires set in Victorian London. So do let me know which one of those you'd like to see me review so that I know which one to prioritise. And then I am to read a book that is specifically between 350 and 390 pages. So for this I have a book which is 369 pages and that is Turning the Storm by Naomi Kritzer. This is the sequel to Fires of the Faithful which is a fantasy duology with a queer protagonist and a lot of complex intriguing political background and I loved the first book in the series and I do really want to get around to um, the second book in the series. And then last but not least I'm supposed to read a book with a flower on the cover and I hope this one counts but it is Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. I am so excited to read this. I recently read The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield and it was one of my favourite books I've ever read. It was fantastic and this is her most recent book to come out and I was very kindly sent a copy of this by Diane Serfield so <laughs> I all the more feel like I want to read it as soon as possible and it does have you know sort of plants and reeds and what not you know sort of river foliage <laughs> on the front which I'm hoping I can kind of count for this challenge because I really do want to read this then again I might um, not be able to resist actually reading this in July and then have to find something else with a flower on the cover but no doubt I will be reading this soon and it may be the one that fulfills that challenge. Now if I can read all of those then I will have my choice of whether I want to become a wand maker or a magiseologist um, but I may end up restricted to one depending on what challenges I complete. However I'd love to know if you're taking part in this readathon, what 
career path is your end goal, what subjects do you have to um, get newts in in August and what are you reading. But until next time, happy reading and I'll see you again soon. Bye guys!